Good evening and welcome to another episode of Sip and Chat. It is your girl Fanta and I'm so thrilled to have my guest here today on the couch with me to have another amazing conversation. Thank you so much for the love on our last episode. It was beautiful. I've seen all the comments and all the reviews. We really appreciate it. A massive thank you to Kalimba for giving us this beautiful venue to film and a big thank you to my friends for setting up Jackie and Ismaila always supporting me. Thank you guys so much. Thank you to Global Properties for being a part of this journey. Um, with me today, I have the one and only who's a personal friend and entrepreneur who's doing really well and I'm very proud to have him on the couch. <laughs> um, we'll get into how I got him because it's, it's, it's not been easy but you know I've been after him. I'm a very persistent girl but I'm so fortunate that he agreed to sit on the couch with me. Thank you very much for coming Mama. Appreciate it. How um, are you? Fine thanks. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, I'm I know I was difficult, but I'm here now, and um, I'm <laughs> no, happy you know, to be here. Hopefully, you know, I feel like if someone is quote unquote difficult, it makes for great conversation after. <laughs> so hopefully, we will have a great episode. Hopefully. Um, for the, those of you who do not know Momata, Mr. Momata is an entrepreneur, and is it right if I say an agriculturist? No? Uh, yeah, there's different things. I'm, I guess, I'm just a businessman in the You're agri a sector. In yeah, the but agri sector. A, yeah, I'm a businessman and a friend as well. Yeah. So I'm very happy. But just tell the people who you are. Like, who's Momata? Um, yes, Momata is just a, sim a Gambian, mm -hmm. um, born and raised. Um, went to school in Canada, in Kenya, and um, um, decided to move back to Gambia to get my feet wet mm -hmm. in the agriculture industry. Um, basically, the story is I felt there was a need mm -hmm. to help uplift the lives of people in the rural sector, mm -hmm. in the rural community, sorry, in the agriculture sector. And um, that's been my life for the last 12 years, mm -hmm. I can say. So I'm, and should be my life's work. Should be your life's work. Yep. You know, it's very interesting. Hardly do you see young people educated that say, you know what, I, I feel like the agriculture sector needs that oomph or that attention. Why? Why did you choose agriculture? Um, I think a lot of it has to do with my education. Mm. Um, I studied international development and I've always been fascinated about development and why Africa is the richest country in terms of resources. Mm -hmm. And everything we eat and everything we consume comes from here, mm -hmm. but yet we're the poorest. And, um, and the biggest disparity between rich countries and poor countries is the ability to feed themselves and feed the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, you could see that disparity in mm -hmm. Gambia. So mm -hmm. for me, I, it's always been something I've been passionate about. Mm -hmm. um, we also find that in rich countries, farmers are rich. They are. Uh, and um, well, in our only countries. It's in Africa, out of the continent, that they're poor. They're so really poor. so um, identifying, troubleshooting why that is. Mm -hmm is something that I was very passionate about before I even got into business. Mm -hmm. um, and um, when I came home, um, it was still trying to figure that out and um, business was the best avenue to, you, some people go through the government to try to do it, some use education. And for me, business was the avenue to actually impact change. And that's why I'm here. And you've been doing this for 12 years now. Um, this particular business, yeah. This particular business. Yeah. Obviously, you're a businessman yeah. in other things, but mostly for me, my interest is very agri sex, um, um, sex, um, what's it called? Centered. Yes. To, to know that there's a young man or, you know, a young entrepreneur who's decided to go into it and has a company called Tropingo Foods. Yeah. What does Tropingo Foods do? So I know now, mm -hmm. I keep telling you, you're the celeb, because I know you've hired, you know, you have, you have a lot of people that do the work as well, that you're empowering yes. in that process. But yes. just run me through that a little bit. Yes, um, I don't like to say that I'm empowering them. I feel like they empower me. They empower you. Yeah, so, uh, How so? Well, there's, your business is basically the people True. that are in your business. Without them, you don't have True. a business. So um, they're committing the hours that they have in the day mm -hmm. to help my business grow. Mm -hmm. Um, that's empowering me. That's the battery pack to my business. Um, nice so, yeah, so we all have 24 hours in the day, right? So you're giving me eight of those hours. Mm -hmm. You're really empowering me, right? So, yeah, so what, what we do, um, we're into peanuts and mangoes okay. and um, fresh vegetables, mainly for export to okay. Europe and China. Okay. That's what we do, basically. And then you, obviously they're grown here, you farm them and everything, and then you package them and send them. Yeah, so um, that's a misconception a lot of people yes. have. Um, okay. We don't do much farming at all, actually. Okay. Very small scale farming. 
um, we buy from farmers. So that goes back to the whole empowerment thing, okay. right? The reason why we're in this sector is um, farmers in Gambia are extremely poor mm -hmm. because they lack access to... Because they do a lot of subsistence farming. Subsistence farming. It's just to sustain, but get a little, sell a little, feed my family. Exactly. Yeah. So it's very immediate needs. Mm -hmm. um, and when you go see a farmer, let's say in the United States, for mm -hmm. example, a peanut farmer, mm -hmm. they're supplying a company. Um, thousands and thousands of tons and this makes them very wealthy. Mm -hmm. um, where are the companies in Gambia that are buying large scale from farmers? It doesn't exist. So um, the idea was to come and build up an entity that would have enough demand um, and needs that we should be able to buy quantities from farmers at a consistent rate mm -hmm. and that's what we've been trying to build over the pre a long period of time. Mm -hmm. This is also why we export. Mm -hmm. We export because that allows us to have a market that's big enough to take the quantities that are needed mm -hmm. to keep the farmers busy. So, that's a and is this exportation like all year round? Or for different crops at different times of the different. year. Oh, okay. So as we speak right now, um, it's February. We're in the groundnut season. Okay. So um, yeah, so we're very seasonal based on the crops. Nice. Some crops are year round. Okay. Um, yeah. So. So the groundnut. Do you have specific countries you export them to, or? Yeah. Ah, okay. Yes, and then yeah. the mangoes. Yes. As well, countries. when it's mango season. When it's mango like, season, exactly. It, how is the demand like? Yeah, so in this business, um, people always talk about the demand. Mm. Um, as long as there are people that are eating, mm -hmm. the demand is always going to be high. Okay. That's just trick about food. The demand is not the problem. The problem is the supply. Mm. The, the, the real question is how is the supply? Okay. And the supply is the most difficult part. Because um, it's much easier for you, Fanta, to say, I want a mango. Yes. So that's demand. Yes. But it's much harder for you, Fanta, to grow a mango, Get it which is the supply. True. So there's a lot of people asking for mangoes, mm -hmm. right? And there's not a lot of people growing it. Growing it in the way that Fanta needs it. Yes. That's what I mean, right? Of course, mm -hmm. mangoes grow everywhere yeah. here, but as soon as you pluck it from the tree, the fire yahoo that's in one, two, three days. When I this mango, you, well, well, from now it's the this mango, you buy the, the rot. The rot. Yeah, the yahoo. I'm Yeah. Right. So. Our job is to prevent that from happening and make sure that Fanta, who might be in the UK, in Russia, in Netherlands, can get that fresh mango um, that she demands from the farm. So the challenge really is getting it from the farm without spoiling it. And take, making sure it gets to Fanta yes. in that fresh state. At a price that she can afford. So all of these things, is that is the hard part. But in terms of Fanta Bugger Mango Mom, Yombana. 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 That's very interesting. Yeah. That's a very, that's a very hectic job, very, by the way, because that's, that's it, it involves make. It's like taking care of a child. Yeah. You don't want the child yeah, to cry. Exactly. You don't want the child to fall. You don't want exactly. the child to be hurt. You want yeah. the child to be delivered to yeah. their new parent exactly. as fresh as possible. Absolutely. It's just, that's 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 incredible. Yeah. I know that um, in starting Tripingo Foods, there was a journey there, and I know somewhere along the line there was a Tony Elumelu who's a philanthropist and a yeah. businessman, yeah. right? How, how was that story? Please run me through that. Because I only heard it. And I know mm -hmm. when that happened, we were all so proud of you, yeah. so happy. And I had to look up who Tony was, because I didn't <laughs> know who he was, you know? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, Tony Elumelu is the chairman of UBA Bank, and he has a foundation called Tony Elumelu Foundation. Okay. And um, around the same time that I was um, maybe three years into the business, mm -hmm. but I was really um, growing in the business. Okay. Um, I needed mentorship. Yes. Yes. So we, we go into business, we don't know anything about business. Yes. Um, and you need direction, you need to understand how to, to run a business. Mm -hmm. I didn't go to business school, as mm -hmm. you know, I studied economics and international development. So I was just looking for um, programs where I could probably professionalize myself. Mm -hmm. And it just so happened that he started this entrepreneurship program. Mm -hmm. And it was for entrepreneurs all over Africa. And um, I said, I'll apply, mm -hmm. really not thinking that I would, would get in. Get in. Mm -hmm. uh, there was, I think, 10,000 people applied and there was, or 20,000, I can't remember, and they had space for a thousand people, I think. So, um, yeah, I, I applied and my, my rule is always in life, the worst thing that can happen is it's they say no. Yep. And really that doesn't mean anything. So mm -hmm. if you're not scared of them saying no, you just, try. just try. So I did it and forgot about it and a few months later I said, yeah, you know, you've been accepted to this program and it was basically a training program that I went and I did. Um, Where was with, this? Uh, it was in Nigeria. 
So I went to Nigeria and um, yeah, we built a great relationship with the firm and with the, they're, they're like family now to me. Um, mentors, um, they invite me to different programs that they do. Nice. And um, there's also, it's not just me, there's uh, since my time, I think in my time there was three or four Gambians. Oh. And ever since then there have been more, more and more. And more Gambians. Yeah, um, I just think that my story gets told the most because they sort of, um, used my, highlighted, Tony Elman himself highlighted my story a lot and he calls me to speak. So a lot of people hear more about my story, but I'm but also, by I far like not the because only. you were like the first batch. Yes, exactly. And you made such a great impression that yeah. it's not just you now, it's yeah. more so when they say Mama Tal is Gambia. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. We try to put on for Gambia wherever that's, we go. And that's where the beauty is. It's yeah. not just you now, it's beyond you. Yeah. It's more so Oh, the Gambian. Exactly. You know, a lot of people might not even remember. Mm -hmm. Oh, Mama, they'd be like, oh, that Gambian, yeah. you know. And, and for me, that's something to be prideful about. Yeah. To have yeah. that to say, oh, they're mentioning my country where I'm from. Absolutely. And that is being highlighted in this uh, now. So absolutely. every time there's a Gambian that comes into the program now, they already have a great perception of Gambians absolutely. because of something great that you've done. Absolutely. So it, it goes beyond that. So so congratulations. Thank and, you. And I how has that, that helped you in, in having Tropingo? And because obviously when you got into it, you didn't know much about business. Yep. You know? yep. But then I'm sure having that training has really improved absolutely. and helped you be able to be, to have a hang on things properly. Yeah, it did, it did two things. Um, one, it gave me more direction okay. and more clarity okay. and more confidence in what I wanted to do. Mm. Um, you know, don't underestimate how much validation. So somebody like Tony Elmelo is a multi-billionaire yep. um, guy who's seen it all, done it all. Yep. And he's looking at your business and saying, look, I really believe in this. Mm -hmm. You know, more, I really, and every time he sees me, he remembers me. He, and that, gave, that validation mm -hmm. gives you confidence. It gives yes. you motivation. Yes. So when I came back, I had a, a new drive yeah. and feeling of where well, I am doing the right thing. Yes. Um, so I think it's important for everybody. I'm mm -hmm. sure in your sector as well, yes. there's some people who've been in broadcasting of a while. Course. And they say, course. I when see they say, you. you know, I see what, you, yeah, it, it does something it for you. So yeah. it's, it's the same thing, yeah. right? It's just in a different field. Yeah. So that, that validation was one. Um, the second thing was, which I didn't expect, was um, the network it opened up, mm. right? Because these, these people are global guys. So mm. when they, they talk about you or they, um, people say, oh, we heard of you through them mm -hmm. and da, 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 da. It opens a lot of doors and does a lot of things for, to you. So um, I think those two key takeaways were the most important. Of course, the business training and everything, but that's what I was expecting. Mm. I wasn't expecting the other stuff. Okay, right? okay. Yeah, okay. You went there yeah. expecting this and you got more. I got more, yeah. How is, how is the agricultural sector now from when you started to now? Do you think there's more youth involved? Do you think there's been a lot of growth? What, what, is, what, are, what are your thoughts on that? So the agriculture sector, uh, not to bore anyone, but um, this is a <laughs> bit going to be a bit nerdy. Mm. Um, it's fragmented, so it's, it's, it's hard to say that the... Because what's happening in the ground sector is completely different from what's happening in the mango sector, yes. right? So the agriculture sector in general in Gambia, mm -hmm. um, I think that there is more eyes on the opportunities that exist there. And the mm -hmm. concept of being involved in farming mm -hmm. is changing. Mm -hmm. So when I moved back, um, most of the farmers that we would work with, or most of the traders would work with, are really um, older rural mm. subsistence, not sub subsistence based, they're commercial but small scale, small right? Scale. Okay. And now you're starting to see a lot of young people coming back and saying, hey, look, I want to do that. Mm -hmm. I want to get into agriculture mm -hmm. and I want to put a modern twist to it. I want to use technology. I want to use mechanization. Yeah. So there is that push, but still some of the same challenges still exist mm. from, from before. Back, okay. So quality issues, mm -hmm. um, yield issues, um, volume issues. Mm -hmm fragmentation as we said mm -hmm. meaning um, there is no real structure of in it, a lot like of to say oh you know we have a proper industry in this now okay. absolutely okay. and that has real ramifications not just for business mm -hmm. but for health yeah. so we uh, give an example mm -hmm. every most of the stuff you eat here is from the agri business yes. from here or from outside mm -hmm. right yeah. and um, you are eating for example peanuts that you don't know where they came from mm -hmm and you don't know whether the quality is good. Mm. And if I told you that 99% of the peanuts grown in Gambia are not considered to be good mm -hmm. for human consumption in Europe, what would that, how would you feel? First of all, what? 
Yeah, so just, just, just think about it, right? If the Europeans feel that the peanuts that we grow, that we've been eating since we were young, are not fit for human consumption in Europe. So what have we been doing? Exactly. And um, there's studies to show that um, the aflatoxin content in peanuts in Gambia mm -hmm. um, is so high and is linked to hepatitis B and, and cancer? Uh, ca liver cancer as well yeah. and things like that. I did hear that at some point. Absolutely. Growing up, you, you yeah, oh, get the bowed or this kind of, it's not so, really it's good, not for, good you. for you. It gives you cancer, yeah. you know, and then... Granted, you have to eat crazy amounts of it. But to, if yeah, you're born still, eating domada and, and by the time you're, you're 60, so, so when they talk and we have all of these hypertension and all of these, 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 these illnesses mm -hmm. and we don't understand where it comes from. And we will spend a lot of money on healthcare mm -hmm. when the money should be spent in developing the food system, what we eat, what we put into our body mm. affects who we are, right? So uh, the aflatoxin problem is a supply chain problem. Like we went back to say the supply and demand. If the supply chain is fixed, mm -hmm. if we have proper traceability and we have the correct education within the farmer base, mm -hmm and we have the right sort of policies to make sure that healthy food is being grown here, not mm -hmm. just for Gambians, also for what we export. Mm -hmm. Meaning that whatever we grow here should be good enough for anyone in Europe. Anyone in Europe shouldn't question it. Shouldn't question it, right? So for me, those things are challenges that we're, this is a fight that our generation has to take up. Mm -hmm. We're at that age where we're exposed enough, mm -hmm. we know enough, mm -hmm. um, and the information is out there. Um, the government can only do so much. That is true. They will try, but they're limited in what they can do. They understand the problems, but they might be limited in how to implement it. That is true. Which is where we come in. So this whole thing about business, business is not just a vehicle to make money. Make money. It's to impact change. It's to impact change. Everything we're in this hotel right here, it's a business to make money. But mm -hmm. guess what? It's providing us a set to do this. To do this true. So everything is connected that way. Right. That's, that's very impressive. Um, just when we say who you are and where you're at now i feel like in society when someone when they perceive someone to come from let's say a well-to-do family and is doing well and this isn't what you studied this is your passion i'm sure when you went to university and came back your dad was expecting you to take the route of what you studied yeah absolutely and then you just woke up like nope agriculture yeah. how, did, how did the family take that not not good <laughs> <laughs> especially not then good. that you know agriculture wasn't yeah it not, wasn't not, that. not good i'm um, luckily i have an uncle who's an agronomist uncle sehu okay uh, my dad's brother and he's like a soil scientist he's really into agriculture so okay. he was he supported what i was doing oh, he understood nice. um but of course you know um your your family just wants the best for you they do Right and their best is what they've known from what now. they know yeah. exactly. They might not get government, get them fee, get the lawyer. Well, yeah. you know. So um, there's this joke I always say. I said for Africans, you have three choices: yes. lawyer, doctor, or failure to the family. Oh, I didn't expect that. <laughs> Those are the three one. options, okay. right? So um, so we all start. Anyone who's not a lawyer, or doctor, starts as a failure, failure to, the, to family, the family, and True. then you prove yourself True. and you show them that there is another way. Yeah. Um, so it was, just, I don't think my story is any different from anybody's. Mm -hmm. I had to fight mm -hmm. for, um, for what I believed in, what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, I had to fight and I think that is one of the key attributes that you need. Mm -hmm. um, uh, even you said that this interview was difficult to have, mm -hmm. but um, it's because there's something I believe in, something I want to do. Mm -hmm. I fight for it, I stand for it. Yeah. And so it's not being difficult. Mm -hmm. It's, um, even my parents might have thought I was being difficult, but yeah. it's no, this is... It's what you believed in. Because I feel it. You were fighting for that. Just fighting for what I believe in, because... Yeah. So when I see that this is good for me, mm -hmm. I'm going to fight for it. And yeah. you might not understand at that but moment, at that moment mm -hmm. but I have to do what I have to do. Right? And I respect that. Yeah. You know, I'm a... I'm because I remember when I went, you know, leaving a job that you, you were paid every end of month yeah. to say, you know, I'm gonna go on my own yeah. and have my mom look at me like, what? Yeah, you're not gonna. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but you just got a good job. That's paying. Yeah. I say, yeah, but I'm not. I don't feel fulfilled. Absolutely. You know, so Absolutely. I understand that. Yeah. And obviously, looking from the outside in, people might have thought, oh, it was easy. They, I'm sure they had it easy. You know, you I had no just, idea. They have no idea. So I'm yeah. glad you actually said that because yeah. knowing having a family that already had their vision of what they want you to do yeah. and you come in and say, I'm sorry, this is not it. This is what I want to do. Yeah. It's always a challenge. Yeah, it's always a challenge. And it's uh, also you have to remember that, you know, I'm grateful for my family. Of course, um, of course I would not be half the person I am without them. Mm -hmm. um, they provide me education, provide me everything. Um, but the onus 
is on me, it's on you mm -hmm. to chart who you're going to be. Your family can only do so much, yes. right? And um, I, I feel as though, I felt at the time mm -hmm. that if I didn't fight for what I wanted, and I took the easy way, mm. even though that's not easy, I'm not going to say no, that. but like easy way as in what they wanted. What they wanted, it right? Was a, yeah. I would, I was going to mess up mm. because it's not who I am. Oh, right. what you wanted. What's the way no, your heart was at? Exactly. Yeah. I'm, and I would get trapped yeah. in it because once you start collecting the salaries every month, and it's harder to get out. So I, so I always sympathize with people, especially like you came from a job yep. and you've come into entrepreneurship. Yep. That is even more scary. Yep. I came back from university broke. Mm -hmm. I hadn't so started working. Nothing. You were more like nothing to lose. Fine. Yeah. Nothing to lose. Well, I did have a, a deal with my family, um, which was they gave me a year. I said, "Look, give me a year to prove myself. Mm -hmm. If I don't, in a year, I'll do what you guys say." Oh, really? Yeah. And that was the deal. That's how I sort of got out of it. But that so. was a lot more pressure, though. Yeah, but it was negotiation. It's okay. business. You yeah. take it. You're like, look, give me a year. Yeah. But guess what? After a year, I didn't have anything to show for show myself. For I was too. still broke. I didn't have anything. <laughs> But it was it was too late. Uh, this is what yeah, it, so you can't. There's nothing we can do. You can, it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Um, we'll go with our first break. One more back. More with Sip and Chat. The pride we take in our brand, the work we put into constantly change the landscape and elevate real estate in the Gambia, it's compared to none. From inception, our goal was to add value to the beautiful Gambian landscape. That's why we are proud innovators of community estates. Kololi Sands is an exceptional piece of work, tailored for ultimate convenience and luxury, to bring you an element of finesse that is rare, but unique in its own. This is also our pride and joy, and we welcome you to the exclusive beauty right here in Kololi and right here on the waterfront. Kololi Sands, feel the ocean breeze at your doorstep. Welcome back after that break. Thank you very much to Global Properties for being a part of the show, for supporting and for sponsoring. We really appreciate it. Thank you to Kalimba. And I still have this amazing gentleman here with me. And right before we were talking about the, the, the challenges that you had as pursuing your dreams you know coming from a family that already had the idea of what they thought you should do and you just gave me like a very insightful explanation which i'm sure someone out there is probably in that situation right now yes. and i hope that is able to help you um in the society here unfortunately men and women are not viewed the same hmm. you're mashallah you're doing well hmm. successful and you're a successful man doing well but there's not that that's what's the word stigma mm -hmm. right as a woman if you're successful and you're unmarried mm -hmm. it's always like ah, go read in Konyeme. <laughs> you know yeah. go read in Konyeme. oh she's doing the ah, who's gonna marry her she's too strong she's too tough mm -hmm. or she has too much no man is going to want that yeah. you know men will be intimidated by that yeah. but when a, when a man like you is successful is doing well there's not there's no conversation about that if anything you're praised oh he's an eligible bachelor not that you are <laughs> but you know what i mean like yeah. for someone that's that's that that is doing well and it's like, oh they're eligible then you're gonna find and we're gonna find you a great wife yeah. there's not that conversation yeah why why do you think that so I think it goes both ways. Um, first of all, uh, when you say I'm successful, I always say we're trying to be successful we are, because we're obviously for we're looking been, outside yeah. looking in. We're proud of you and thanks, success thanks. is it varies. Thanks, thanks. Yeah. yeah. So we're 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 um what what I meant by that is um, success is a journey. Mm -hmm. I, I don't believe it's a, a destination. destination. I feel like you're always trying to improve yes. and become better. Yes. So I always say uh, people trying to be successful and I think everyone should mm -hmm. and um, of course there's disparities between the sexes mm -hmm. in, in, in this country that we live in yep. but it's also both ways. So? Yeah so um, I, I just say this to flip it around right mm -hmm. um, when you're perceived to be um, successful in this uh, country and you're a male it also comes with its own pressures, mm -hmm. right? Um, that, uh, for example, you're expected to take care of a lot of people. Yes. You're also expected to marry well. Yes. And also, you also have this paranoia that everyone wants to marry you because they think you're successful, yes. right? So you also have things to deal with. Mm -hmm. 
of course not to say that equates to what women have I to deal not with. To say that, it but doesn't. I do. I'm just saying that yeah. uh, there is no. It's never greener on the other side. Yes. Right. But it's so, a bit easier though for men. It is, but yeah. the the point is, success comes with a burden. It does. Right. So I have a cousin. Um, she's a, she's a banker. She's doing well, mm -hmm. um, and uh, she's a single mother. Mm -hmm. And we literally had this conversation last week mm -hmm. that men are intimidated by her. Yep. And I say, who would be intimidated by you, right? You know her. Of course, right? This, this is exactly what she said. No, you're hunger man, exactly. nini, nini. But like men, man, ak jigen you neka si bangwi, lileng dewa. That men think that, you know, we are a certain way because we were in the bank. And I, I never thought, thought of that, right? That. So uh, my message would be to the men, mm -hmm. and tap it. What are, you, what are you scared of? I'm so happy you that know? you said it. Well, I talked to Ismail, he said something similar to yeah. it. But tap it, la. It's tap it. You know. I keep saying that too, but go on. What's this inferior? You're a man, you know. Yeah, so, exactly. Um, I don't think that people's values should be based on who they are in terms of their career and their success. Should be You should be able to look past that. Mm -hmm. um, I get very uncomfortable when people attribute me to success. Because mm -hmm. I'm not a different person than I was when I was in quote-unquote working success yeah. when I was a student or whatever. I might have been a bit more immature. Yeah. But that has nothing to do with the success, <laughs> yes. right? And I hope that if I were ever to reach some certain heights of in my career, I would hope that I'm also not. I'm, people are able to see past that, yes. right? And I think that it's we say that, mm -hmm. but we should stop projecting that on women as well, mm. right? And I think that's where it comes from. It's the projecting. Yeah. A lot of the things I feel like, a lot of the issues, or a lot of the things, the words they throw at women, is projecting. It's probably yeah. how society, men, yeah. feel. You know, and it has nothing to do if if this is how I look at it. If a woman isn't doing a lot and it's just like not doing anything basically, and then a man marries you and you're just at home and there is a lot of responsibilities in that home yep. even. Yep. Tough. Yep. And, and and then they will also say in a key Jacob and Moka Amesa, so she has to this take everything. So there's really no winning. There's no winning. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Because yeah. when you're home and you're a housewife and you know what? When life gets tough, I keep telling my friends, you know what, I think I want to be a housewife. Yeah. You know, but there's always challenges in Obviously. every aspect of a woman's life, of a person's life, but mostly of a woman's life. Yeah. Whether you're home and you're taken care of by a husband or not, yeah. you're labeled. Yeah. Whether you're a successful woman unmarried, you're still labeled. Yeah. You hear them say, Tari Jigen Sailor. Mm. But yeah. would they not say Tari Gold Sailor or Barke Gold Jabat Bala? Um, but you don't think that's changing? Uh, you know, every time because I, I feel I, like it's changing, yeah. I some scenarios pop up and I'm like, really? Yeah, but you know, I think that, for example, with men, I know that um, they were always saying that Jabat Moy Moy so worse Yes. Right? And um, so I think those things exist for both men and female in different ways. Mm. I do think that women are unfairly, um, how do you call it? Treated. Yeah, I'm fairly treated and a lot of pressure, un undue pressure is put on women, Literally. especially if you're trying to pursue a, a career. If you're trying to pursue that, oh, oh, are you you're pursuing, pursuing, when are you going to get married? You know, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah younger that had it. Mm -hmm. it's, I just feel like as women, especially if you're doing something, especially in this case, if you're a visible woman mm -hmm. in, in society doing something, oh, thank you. Oh, she, they probably love this so much, that's why they don't have time for marriage. Yeah, yeah. And whereas actually men, men are probably worse in that where we work so much that we actually don't have time for marriage. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it's not fair. But it goes back to, there's certain things that we, we really can't change right now. Mm -hmm. It will change over time with our, with our attitudes changing mm -hmm. in the society. So I, f I feel like every generation is a bit more enlightened than the last. Mm -hmm. That's but, true. But where we stand right now, we all have to accept and acknowledge that success comes with burden, comes with responsibility. Mm -hmm. And you cannot have everything you want mm -hmm. the way you want it, mm -hmm. right? I would love to be successful without anybody knowing my name, right? Um, Is that so? Absolutely. The, the older I get, the more I, I, I cherish that. Because that's true. Because before, obviously, before we started the interview, we're having this type of conversation. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, you were telling me more about how you're just trying to be more, let me just do the work with the people. I don't even want to be, yeah. you know. Yeah. Why? Uh, you know, you grow and you learn more about yourself. Yes. Right. So uh, when I started this journey, um, you know this, I've, I get a lot of press. And yes. at the beginning, yes. it was exciting, yes. you know. 
So you, you, so and so comes to talk to you. So is writing about you. Mm -hmm. You're on TV here. You're on there, mm -hmm. and it's really exciting. You've never experienced it before. That, yeah. Uh, and then after that, you start experiencing what that comes with. Meaning, you walk into the room, and people you don't know already know who you are, yes. right? Or, or they would, and all they know about you is based on your what business. What they've read or what they've seen, yeah. Which is just your business. Yes. And they don't realize you know, today I'm not even in the business. I don't even want to think. Today my, I'm not even the businessman. Or my business is going horribly right now. Yes. I don't want to talk about my business yes. right now. So, but it comes with it, yeah, right? It so which is why I say you have to accept what it comes with. Mm -hmm. I can't act like um, I just want the spoils of business and I don't want the, what comes with it. But then I realized that that is the case. Mm -hmm. So you know what, um, I don't necessarily have to talk to everybody. Mm -hmm. I like um, doing my job and I like being in the field. So I've been a lot more recluse and I think that's just coming with age, growing up mm -hmm. and learning yourself. Mm -hmm. So you go through the experiences and you say, ah, I did that, it was cool. Don't want to do it anymore. I don't really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I'd rather do this. Or I in fact, the benefit of what it's doing for me right now. Yeah, and yeah. if I'm going to do it, yeah. let it have a benefit mm -hmm. or let it have an impact through mm -hmm. for what I'm trying to achieve mm -hmm. or Put, shed light on something mm -hmm. right so um do you think also because you are on forbes 30 yeah. on a 30 yeah. was that it yeah you know and that's a huge deal yeah. and do you think being listed as 30 most influential 30 under 30 people in africa do you think that added pressure to that to what you're saying to why you're more like i don't yeah think, i think I want more of the public no 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 like now like the forbes thing was mm -hmm. unbelievable Yes. Right. For me, I, I didn't even I thought it was a prank, to be honest. Really? Yeah. When they first reached out, I thought it was it was a, it was a prank. So I ignored it. And then afterwards, like they sent again, sent again. And I started talking to them. It's like, this is real. And that time I was excited, like I said, yes. very excited. And even after that, it was this exciting. Was what, five, five years ago, six years ago. Yeah, six or seven. It's a long six, time yeah. ago. 2015, I think. It does, it's not long. Time, it's, time flies. It's <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. So. Um, so I went through that journey and I'm so appreciative of, of it, course. right? And it, it really took me to another level, right? Yes. Um, but I think after that, like, the things that you don't enjoy is you would be hanging out with people and people come and say, hey, that's the Forbes guy. Yeah. Like, no, I'm just Momar, yeah. Yeah. right? You know, or people think that you're this multi-millionaire. Like, no. Yeah, they think it's, because you were featured in Forbes. Yes. <laughs> so then your whole identity becomes this thing that is not who you really are, yeah. right? And um, you, you, and the older you get, that you start to process these things differently, and you start to be more conscious about uh, not being in those situations where the only thing people identify me about is not just just the Forbes or just my business yeah, or just Tropingo you know, or Tropingo yeah. or whatever. Whereas people who actually know me yes. don't associate any of those things with me. At it's just all. an addition. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we know you do we this. Why? You do this it's, Moma. Yeah, it's Moma. And that's what I enjoy. But also, you have to understand, once you get into that space... It comes with it. It comes with it. I know. <laughs> like, I know Mama, obviously. Yeah. Like, I know that... I know Mama. I've known Mama for, what, yeah, 10 years yeah, now at yeah, least? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. to me, it's like, oh, you, I see you, I do, oh, celeb, celeb, but that's about it. Yeah, yeah. I, that's what but I that's do. different But because we know each other. We do. Right? But I'm talking about people but you don't know. That's what I'm saying. Right? So people you don't know yeah. don't know that. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, people are different, so they might look at you like, oh, it's a big deal you know yeah, and yeah. you might not even appreciate all of that rah rah that comes with it you're just a chill guy yeah and, and sometimes it's just like it's it's awkward because you have to Play you nice. always have to put on a face That's what I'm saying. for nice. for people because you know that this might be the only time you ever meet them and, and you don't want to leave a bad taste in there a lot bad taste and also you don't also want to discourage them like yeah. a lot of people uh, sometimes mm -hmm. come to me for advice mm -hmm. and I might not even have the right advice to them but you know that just acknowledging, like I said, that that acknowledgement that Tony gave me yeah, gave me so much, exactly. you know. So I always think about that. Like these people, you, you might not know me. I might not be having the greatest day, but I could really crush this person without knowing it. So I have to be conscious about that. I'm so glad you said that because it reminds me of, you know, I, I get young, a lot of young girls. Oh, I look up to you. Oh, I look up to you. You're my role model. And sometimes I could be going through the worst time yeah. of my life. Yeah. Well, you have and to somebody would message me. You know, I need motivation right now. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, need I need motivation. motivation. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I need motivation right yeah. now. Do you know? You know, exactly. but We're I only can't human. show them that. Yeah. You know, I always have to. Be, oh no, don't worry. You'll be all right. As much yeah. as I'm talking to them, I'm actually talking to myself yeah. too. Yeah. So I, I do understand that. Yeah. And you know, but outside of this, this whole grand personality that the, that the public has of you 
what is some of the legends of life or just the simple things of life that you enjoy doing on a day off, on a regular day? I'm such a simple person, like honestly. Um, the best thing for me is when I get home and my daughter comes and gives me a hug, right? That's for me, that's what I look forward to now, Best right? Um, I'm quite simple. I watch my football, my Arsenal, I banter with my friends. Arsenal? Yeah, you see. Yes. So everyone that's laughs. Get but, into that, but, okay. but you know, <laughs> you, you guys, Tangenham Arsenal, we were there for the Invincibles. So yeah, but we, guess what? We come but from after an era. That it's, it's over. We're coming back. Don't okay, worry. we'll see about that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. What, what team are you? Manchester. I knew it. <laughs> so anyway, um, Everybody uses it. Some people use it to promote their business. Some people yes, use it. For sure. Yeah, I've been. I checked. I've been since 2008. I was on Twitter, and Twitter back then and Twitter now is very different. Ooh. There were no rules. There were no boundaries back then. So now everything is. Oh my God! You, you're you're yeah, sensitive yeah. to this. You're yeah, that, you're exactly. That. You know, it's a lot. Yeah. It really is a lot. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, this is Kalimba Sunset. You know, they, every every time we're filming, they bring different different drinks, different okay. mocktails. So, thank you, Kalimba. Because it's sip and chat, but we've been chatting a lot without sipping. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's pretty nice. Um, thank you very much. We're about to enter into one of my favorite segments. Mm -hmm. um, the Never Have I Ever segment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I said, Mama, do you know the Never? Yeah, I know Never Have I Ever. I said, okay. <laughs> um, so it's simple. Yeah. If I ask you a question yeah. and you've done it, you yeah. take a sip. Okay. Simple. If I've done it. Yes. If okay. you haven't, then no. Okay. You ready? All right. First question is, since you know you're a businessman and an entrepreneur, have you ever lied on a resume? <laughs> um, I've never had a resume. <laughs> what? Yeah, I've never had a resume. I've never worked... Um, a... For people to create a resume. No? Yeah, no, I, I, let's not put it that way. I have worked okay. jobs, but not the kind of jobs that you need a resume. <laughs> 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 right. Um, yeah, I've, I've never had a real resume. Really? Yeah. Today? Till today, yeah. Nah, high five. That, I, don't, I don't know if that's something to celebrate. No, but what I'm saying is you took a bet on yourself. Yeah, I guess so. And that's why you I didn't need so. it. I have a bio. That's what I have. See, I hope I can get to a level where, Fanta, no, 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 I have a bio though. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's a nice way to put it. Okay, okay. You know, and then my second question is, never have I ever stalked an ex on social media. Don't know what? Back in it, stalked an ex. Stalked? Yes. No. Back in the day when Instagram just started. No? No, I don't think so. No, stock. Yeah, stock is a strong word. No, you know what I mean. Stock. Okay, okay. Maybe you have an ex, and you know you just want to see what's going on in their life, and you dip into their Instagram. Well, let me just see. Oh yeah, I do that. I do that today. <laughs> <laughs> that's why Instagram is there. That's that's, that's different. Saying. That's not that's stock. What I'm saying. So, okay, okay. We're not stalking, but you know what I mean. Checked on an ex and stuff. Uh, like yeah, that. yeah. On Instagram. Yeah, that means I have to. You have to take a sip. And this is my favorite one to ask everyone. Never have I ever dated two people at the same time. <laughs> oh, no. Ah, uh, no. Oh. No. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay, moms. Uh, fourth question. <laughs> <laughs> I just, fourth question is, never have I ever, never have I ever done skinny dipping? No. No? Yeah, no. I'm boring like that. Really? Yeah. Are you skinny dipped? I mean, it's not about me, it's about you. I say yes. <laughs> um, it's not about me, okay. Yeah, you're much cooler than me. I'm not I, cool. I, I don't even know where I'd skinny dip. So that's a, At a pool, nighttime, house party, mm. stuff like that. No. Get togethers. No. no. I've never been this. Do you know what skinny dip means? I know. <laughs> okay, complete what, skinny what dip. Do you mean? Yeah, what do you mean? Oh, uh, yeah, it's a great party, huh? <laughs> 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 never been to one of those, but. <laughs> Maybe hey, I'm I've school. never been to one. I'm just saying, you know, I'm just giving you scenarios. Yeah, no, I've never. <laughs> okay. I can't say I have. I've Final. had a, I've had a lot of good times, but I've never done that. You've never done that? No. Okay. Last one. Never have I been never have I been high at a serious meeting. Hi. Yeah. yeah. I don't get high. No? Mom man, you know what? I've known you for so long and everything you said, I'm just like, who is this man? Yeah, well, now, yeah, this is the first time you ever asked me these questions. That's right? true, actually. We've it never goes had back these. to our assumptions, right? Oh, that's true, see? Right. But thank you very much for coming on Sip and Chat. Yeah. I really appreciate it. That's about it, really. And you know, you've done well. I feel like you're like the, the least I have guest I have had mm -hmm. so far. Everyone's done at least three or four things I've asked. But oh, I've done what? One? You've only done one. Yeah, you asked me if I skinny dip and get high at meetings. <laughs> I don't... Uh, okay, okay, last one. Never have I ever lied at this game. Where with you? Just now. No, I never lie. You? No. 
Okay. 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 Thank yeah. you very much, Mama. Yeah, no worries. I really appreciate you coming on Safe and Chat because you know I know it. this isn't what where you're at. We've talked about it. Yeah. Just to, to give interviews, but I really appreciate you coming on the platform. You come because this is support for me as well, and I appreciate that. So thank you. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. And this brings us to the end of this episode. Thank you very much. I will leave. Obviously, Tropingo Foods will be down here, and you know your website as well for people to check out and you know bring business. That's what we're here for. Thank you very much. Till I come back your way again. Peace, love, and cha-ching, cha-ching. <laughs>